Well, hello, good morning or afternoon at this point. Steamtown youth, it's awesome to uh, be connecting with all of you again. As you can see, coronavirus has taken its toll and my hair has grown extremely long. In the last three weeks, I haven't left the house. I'm just kidding, I have left, but I'm going crazy. Regardless, it's great to connect with you guys. Uh, so hey, last couple of weeks, we've been uh, releasing some video lessons and uh, this week we are going to uh, get back into our old series that we had. Uh, we were going through a series on Christian basics uh, when we were meeting together. Um, and so uh, we're just going to hop right back into that this, uh, today uh, and um, begin to look at just some practical ways that we can live out our faith uh, even while being stuck at home. Uh, so if you guys have your Bibles, go ahead and grab those. We're going to be in the Old Testament today. Uh, I know that we don't typically spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, but I'm looking forward to this time. We're going to be in a book called First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Uh, so I'll let you guys turn there. You can also pause this at any point. It will be in chapter 16. Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, what it means to worship. Um, Worship has a lot of different meanings. Uh, I have a lot of instruments. I've led worship for years, and so uh, I've thought a lot about worship, but there's just still a lot that um, I continue to think through, continue to process through, and um, really just try to deeply understand what it means to truly worship God. Um, I found this great definition. It says, worship is an action or an attitude that devotes all praise to God. Uh, when we worship, it's really easy for us to kind of get locked into this idea that we are only in church singing together on a Sunday morning, and that is worship. And then when we leave, we're not going to worship again until the following Sunday when we're gathering together again in church. Now, while this is uh, uh, worship, it's a big part of worship, especially for us in the church when we come together and sing together. Um, that's not where worship stops. And so my hope uh, just in the next few minutes is just to encourage all of you to begin to think through how can you worship in your life when we're not meeting on a Sunday morning? How are we, actually right now is a perfect time. We, we literally cannot meet together. We're not coming together as a church and singing. So does that mean worship stops? Um, but what I hope you see from our text and just through thinking about this today, uh, that we can worship in all things, in all aspects of our lives, regardless of what, where we are or what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to pray really quick, and then we'll read our text. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. I pray for each student watching this, that they would uh, just be challenged to see where they can worship you in their life. I, I pray that we would see that worship goes beyond just singing um, a song, but rather we can, we can sing with our life, that our joy, our hope, and all that we are can be devoted to bringing you glory in everything that we do. We love you. Uh, we pray your blessing on our time today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, where I'm going to read here, First Chronicles, this is chapter 16, beginning in verse 23. So this is a big uh, psalm of thanksgiving and praise in the midst of First Chronicles. I'll read this, starting in verse 23. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before him all the earth. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Let the heavens be glad and the, let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nation, the Lord reigns. I mean, these words, you can't get more powerful than that. We, we see that God is our creator. God is our king. God holds all things in his, in his hand. 
God controls all things. He is above all things. He works through all things. And because of this, we worship him. And so as this psalm is being read, I even, while reading it, just I got excited just being reminded, wow, my God is not distant. My God is not out of control, but rather he is present. He is here right now. He is in control of all things. He created all things. And because of that, I can completely give my praise and devotion to him. So the first thing I just want to quickly discuss is just what is worship, right? We see this this list of attributes of who God is and what he's done, and we get excited and we're like, all right, how do we worship? And I just made a quick list here. Worship I have is devotion. So firstly, worship, when we're devoted to something, right, we're loyal to it. I am devoted to my friends. They know that I am continually their friend and will continue to be their friend through the thick and the thin. Um, So our devotion to God is this unceasing loyalty to him, saying, you are my God. I am your people, and I will worship you through all my days. And so firstly, worship is this commitment and this loyalty to follow after God. Worship is active. Um, Worship isn't something that we can turn on and then turn off, right? It's easy to, you know, I I think singing songs really does that, especially that's kind of a hindrance, I think, of singing songs is that you can turn it on. We're like, okay, we're singing. Yeah, song's done. Okay, now I'm not worshiping. And, and, And it's like this almost like active, inactive switch. But rather worship is constantly active that you can worship with your very existence that everything you're doing can bring glory to god everything you're doing can be a light for jesus so we can worship through how we work what we say how we think how we interact everything can actively be worshiping god for who he is that we use our existence to worship him worship is a mindset um you all know what it's like. We all know what it's like. We can think about different things. You know, like I'll use the example of when we're really procrastinating. Like <laughs> uh, I procrastinate often. I, I, you know, there's just times I'm like, man, I know what I got to do. I don't want to do it. And so, right, we put it off. We get in this mindset. We're like, ah, I don't want to do it. But it's amazing that we at the almost like the slip of a switch we can turn on this mindset we can now be ready to work all right i gotta knock out what i gotta do i gotta do my thing i gotta do that assignment right we 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 become now active and the same thing is with our worship it's a mindset that we have to put on that we have to um regularly think hey how am i worshiping god how is my life giving glory to him? How am I worshiping him for the king and creator that he is? Um, And when we fall away from that mindset, we shouldn't be surprised when we look back at our week and be like, wow, man, I didn't really worship a lot this week. Why? Why? And a lot of that is because it's a mindset that we have to put ourselves in where, where we say, hey, I'm going to worship God today. I'm going to worship God right now. And the last thing is worship is a heart focus. Uh, I know many of you are very intellectually driven. Many of you are very emotionally driven. And both are needed for effective worship, that we have to think about how we are worshiping God. Um, but we also need to feel driven towards God. This is something really important. Uh, you know, I'm a very emotionally driven person. I've been told throughout my life many times, unfortunately, like, hey, you like got to calm your emotions down. And while sometimes I do let my emotions uh, guide my actions more than my intellect should in a moment. Our emotions are still a very important part to our faith and our worship. And so the last thing is just letting our desire, our excitement to worship God, right? Like I said, as I was reading these, I got excited. I was like, wow, our God did this. He did this. He's this. Let that guide you. Let that worship, you know, let that lead you to want to pray or talk about who God is, or even just listen to a worship song. That's worship, when our being is focused on him. And the second thing, guys, to get to is recognizing that God is our focus. You can worship countless things in our lives, and we do. We worship our friends, our significant others. We worship possessions, 
we worship school, we worship our talents, the things we do. And now all these things are great things. And actually we're, we're called to have friends and to work well and to pursue and develop our talents. These are all very biblical things. But nothing should be above God. Our, our life's focus should be centered on Jesus. That when we make the things that we own more important than Jesus, when we make um, who we're dating more important than Jesus, we've now made that person or thing what we are worshiping. And that we shouldn't do. When we worship the pinnacle point of our life, everything that we do should fall under this mindset of like, hey, I'm going to use this to worship God. As I'm working, I'm going to worship God. Our relationship, our friendships, our significant others, your relationships can worship God. And it's just learning over time how to worship even through things that maybe offhand don't seem like you can worship through. But worship means that everything we do points to God and gives him the glory. So why do we worship God, right? We hear this, hey, worship, hey, sing this song. And so I'm just going to look really quickly back at this um, passage. I'm, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to point out a few things. So the first thing we worship for, he created all. He redeems humanity. This is verse 15. He rescues his people. That's verse 21. He is above all things. He's sovereign. So that means that he is in control. And that's verse 27. Our God is good. It's verse 34. And most importantly, God is love. And that's also verse 34. God is worthy in, uh, of all of our worship because he has done so many things and he is so many things. He is our source of life. He made us. He is our creator. He created all things, guys. If anything, we should worship him because he made existence, right? I, I mean, this... When we comprehend that everything that is came from the hand of God, we should be driven just to, uh, by that alone, say, wow, this God is so worthy of my praise, for he made all things. And not only did he make it, but he loves it. He loves you. He loves his people. So he redeems his people. He works through his people. He cares for his people. He rescues his people. He's above all things. He is good. He is love. I mean, that list alone, and that's not even this entire chapter, but that gives us ample reason to worship God. So a, a little bit of a reflection. Worship is something that it's really a lifetime of practice. I'm only 28. Um, I have a lot of years ahead of me, and so I will continue to learn what it means to worship until the day that I die. But what we can do is be intentional about learning how to worship. This is Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read this. It's verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves, uh, present your bodies, a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Your worship comes from how you think. Your worship comes from how you act. Your worship comes from the, the things you want to do and desire. Your worship comes from uh, just even your character. Your, who you are, who you've become, who you are going to be. You can worship, worship and you should worship with the whole of your existence. While I relate, I most worship when I'm singing a song. Our relationships, uh, the things we do and think, everything can point to God's goodness, his sovereignty, and, and um, could point to his throne. Your life can should be a light for Jesus. Your, light, your life should point to the fact that God is real and that he is on the throne. And when, when we try to think through how our lives are serving him, it's amazing what happens. Suddenly, 
our relationships, what we're doing, how we're even thinking through things becomes more and more focused on him. Have your friends, have the things you love to do. Be intentional about growing as a person. Be intentional about growing in your faith. And through all that, I hope you guys continue to learn throughout your life what it means to worship. So my only challenge to you is this. Where in your life do you worship? What relationships do you have? What things do you do that you can look at and say, yeah, I worship God through that. But then I also want you to begin thinking, hey, where in my life maybe you know, aren't I worshiping, worshiping God? Where am I not reflecting him? If I looked at this relationship, would I, would I see God's goodness and love in it? Or do I not? And so those are my two big challenges for you guys today, is just begin thinking on where you are worshiping and where you're not. And my hope with that is that you can learn where uh, you can worship more throughout your life, through all that you do, ultimately to give glory to God. We'll see you guys then on our Zoom. Thanks for hanging. Love you guys. Miss you all. We'll talk to you soon.